Hi, I'm Sue. And I'm Mel, and this is Manifesting with Mel and Sue. Our topic today is... Persisting. Persisting! We talk about that a lot, don't we? But it's so important. Yeah, so it can be. So here's the thing. Can you manifest instantly? Yes. Yes. Um, does it always happen that way? Not always. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can create the rules. <laughs> That wasn't really what we we're going to talk about. No. But, <laughs> but yeah, you, it can always happen that way if you decide it, right? Yeah. Um, Creating the rules. Yes. Mm -hmm. But in case it doesn't, let's talk about persisting. Yes. 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 In the unlikely opportunity or circumstance that you don't get what you want every time you instantly decide it. Um, let's talk about persisting because that's a big part. It's tiny, tiny part <laughs> of manifesting. So easy. So, so easy. So I'm persisting right now. Um, I'm not talking yet about what it is that I'm manifesting because I am going to wait until I share my success story. But I have been persisting with robotic affirming, basically just to prove that I can manifest that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, and of course I can because I'm God and I can do anything. So what does persisting mean? It just means um, consistently doing the same thing until you see a result. Yes. So I had talked in the past about a specific person that um, basically got me into uh, the law of assumption, um, not intentionally. I really wanted to be with this person, right? And so I started learning about the law of assumption and was manifesting this person for like two years. Um, and the issue that I had in manifest, I got a ton of movement. Oh, I was sure. really good at it. Trust me, a ton of movement. But the issue is, I wasn't so great at the time at persisting. Mm. So I would go from one technique to another. Um, when I started robotically affirming, I would robotically affirm that um, I was this person's girlfriend, and then I'd see a ton of movement, and then it would stop, and I would continue to affirm, but then there would be nothing, and so I'd give up and try a new affirmation. I wasn't persisting, and so I got a lot of hot and cold, and um, I had a lot of frustration at the time, um, and what I recognize now is that I just need to stick to one or two affirmations and repeat them until those affirmations become true in my reality. I feel like um, kind of kiss you know, the kiss theory. Keep it simple, stupid? No, well, I say keep it simple, sweetie. I love that. <laughs> That's mine. I keep it simple, sweetie. Um, because it, it don't, you don't have to overcomplicate it. You really don't. Um, I used to do the same thing. I, I realized um, I would try a technique. And, and this is very, very, very common with people. Because um, you want to see results and you want them fast. And, and if you're not... Um, if you're not quite to the place of um, creating the rule of manifesting instantaneously, um, you do need to persist. And, and um, so I feel like um, people, and I see this a lot, that they'll find a technique that works and then they'll see a success story. Or they'll hear a success story of like, oh, I did this and it worked so fast for me. And they're like, oh, I'm going to do that. And then they read another success story and they're, oh, I'm going to do that. And, and they're just constantly jumping around. They're like, why is it taking so long? I don't get it. I'm doing everything. That's the problem. You're doing everything. And you do. You have to, you find what works for you and you stick to it. But again, you create the rules. So if you, if you want to create the rule of, oh, I can do 20 different techniques and I can manifest like that, mm -hmm. then you can. If you... Um, if you believe that manifesting is hard, then you could do 20 different techniques and not a single one of them is going to work because you believe manifesting is hard. So all you have to do is what? Persist. Persist. And you, you just pick one thing, one or two things. Um, and like we said, kiss, keep it simple, sweetie. I love that. Thanks. Um, do you have any stories about persisting? I do. I actually, um, I had, um... This was an SP who was an ex, and I wanted to see if I could manifest him back, and I did. And I, it was funny because when I first did it, um, I did it instantly. I, I actually did it instantly. And you're like, well, what does that have to do with persisting? When I got it, um, I didn't get the full manifestation at first, 
And so I persisted through it and I kept, I finally like, you know, I, I was like, oh, I am now I'm getting the hot and cold. So that was showing me that I needed to continue because it, it was working. It was working. And so I started, um, I just simplified and I just had one or two affirmations that I said over and over again about this SP. And, um, yeah, it worked like, it, it works faster than you think when you're going through it, it feels like it's taking forever. And then when you like, when you finally get it, you're like, okay, you know, it was only a week. That's not bad. You know, or two weeks. Right. <laughs> you're yeah. like, okay. It wasn't actually forever. We tend to kind of over dramatize things sometimes when we're not going me, through it. Never. Never. <laughs> I had I had a story about persisting. Um, oh, I had talked about the weight loss one where I decided what the number um, yes. was on the scale, and I would step on it, and and it would be gradually lower. But I I would just be like, nope, that that's not what it is. It's this number. And then one day I I stepped on it and was way way off, and I just laughed. I was like, you're not even close. That's not even the right number you're so silly because that's not how much I weigh and then one day it was right so that's that's one example of persistence that's a great example I love that thank you and you can do that too with like your bank account you can be like yeah oh, silly bank account like, with anything that's not right it's missing a few zeros be delusional right exactly um I have another story um this this is an example of um I changed a car <laughs> so there was a guy that I was involved I with, and we were supposed to um, spend time together when he was actually going to come and stay over. Um, and uh, I was very excited about it, um, but then he ended up backing out, and he said that he was um, going to be in a specific place. And I was very upset, and I drove somewhere where I thought that he might be instead of that place. And I saw a um i saw his truck and it was a uh, it was a chevy and um i got very upset and i reacted in that moment and i ended things and i blocked him and afterward i was like oh crap i need to revise all of this <laughs> but instead of revising everything i just, I just revised his truck <laughs> so i was like oh that couldn't have been him. He doesn't drive the Chevy. He drives a Ford. And so we started talking again, right? And one at one point he came over. And uh, when the truck was um, pulling into my driveway, I looked and uh, um, I was like, oh, that's not a Chevy. There's no way because he drives a Ford. So um, I didn't care what the logo on the, on the truck said because he drives a Ford. Like, there's no way that that's his truck. Um, he must be driving someone else's truck. Um, so <laughs> one day um, I was driving past his work and I saw him getting out of his Ford <laughs> truck. <laughs> And I messaged you, and, and I was, was like, I remember holy you, crap. You were <laughs> like, I just did, did this. <laughs> and ever since then, he'd always driven a Ford. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I don't know why, I just, it's like, <laughs> this is the thing that's going to fix everything is the truck. Um, but you know what? It did, because you make the rules. Right. Yes. I love that. That's such a cool story. <laughs> Thanks. I remember that when you did that. When I, I just like, when I saw that, that truck awesome. in my driveway and I was like, well, that, that can't be right. It's just not, <laughs> it can't be right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so you can literally change anything. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's very true. I love that. Yeah. So we were talking about persisting mm -hmm. and I have to say we make it, I feel like in the past, I say we, I've made it harder than it needed to be. Oh, I'm, um, I'm in that boat with you. <laughs> except, but now it's so easy, right? Yeah, it is. Because you just, you stick to your, you stick to your one phrase or your one scene and you just keep repeating it until mm -hmm. you have it. And exactly. That, that's it. Exactly. And it's kind of fun too. Um, you can play with it. I actually, um, I did this to a friend of mine. Um, we... I had seen somebody else had posted something on Facebook in a different group and they said um, that they they got their person or maybe maybe you told me this we were taught I was I, I don't remember it now but um, anyway the point is um, this particular person I decided I you know I looked at their Facebook page and I was like they're gonna post a picture of 
this. And I think, I think I messaged you like the next day and I was like, oh my God, guess what I just did. And the person, like no other posts on their entire feed <laughs> about this. It was this one thing that I got them to post. And I remember messaging you and being like, oh my God, I did it. And it was so cool. It was, it was just like, I did it just as this fun little like, I'm going to flex my manifesting muscle and sure. I can do this. And I did it. And I was like, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. So like do fun little things. Like do these fun little like games with yourself to yeah. show that you can do this. Yeah. You know, Bil it's building up the belief, right? Yes. Yes. Build it like you would a muscle. Just, Just practice practicing it. and doing it over and over again. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to, also, another little thing about persisting, um, going back to the roots of the Law of Assumption, Neville Goddard talked about what he called brazen impudence. Um, and what that means is basically being delusional, like, right? Like deciding that what you see in front of you is not real. Like it's hard because we grow, we grow up thinking that everything around us, everything that's solid and concrete is real, right? But when you realize that you created it all and that really we're just, li we're living in the past. We're living in, the reality that we're living in is a result of our past thoughts, right? And so you don't have to accept it as true anymore just because it once was for you. So you're God, you create the rules, you can change them at any time and you can change your reality by persisting in the fact that anything you want is possible. Mm -hmm. Just decide it and, and, and be brazen about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that um, we should. We should be like, you know, straight in your crown and be like, hell yeah, I can do this. Yeah. You know, I think that that's key. So, yeah, I, I like that um, that phrase, brazen, brazen impudence. Yes. Easy for me to say. <laughs> All right. So if you have any comments on persisting, um, please drop them in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions or challenges or um, things that you want to persist in. Exactly. And don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. And go out and manifest that dream life.